Hello and welcome again. My name is uh, Max Wyman, uh, class of 1988. I'm the current uh, Director of Alumni Relations and Associate Director of Admission. And I just wanted to welcome uh, you this morning uh, to the state of the, the school that we do by Ms. Beard. And we also will be having a couple of alumni uh, awards this morning. Uh, it's a great morning, a uh, lot happening on campus, beautiful day. But I wanted to thank you all for coming here. And without further ado, I'm going to introduce to you the head of school, Bessie Spear. field hockey game and the JV boys soccer game and incredible weather outside, but we are trying to build our muscle as an alumni association and an alumni body of the Tower Hill School. So um, we will we will look carefully as to where to choreograph this um, in years to come, but we need you to help spread the word that Tower Hill is having an annual alumni association meeting so that we can all kind of gather back on homecoming weekend. Um, I won't be long because I am standing in between you and the most exciting part of the program, uh, which is our um, young and distinguished alumni award uh, winners. Uh, but I do think it's worth kind of taking stock of, of where your alma mater is. Uh, I've been fortunate to be head, this is my seventh year. I headed a school in New England and um, my family and I moved here seven years ago and have just been so fortunate to be part of the Tower Hill community. We have two children, one of whom graduated from Tower Hill three years ago and was a junior in college, and he played varsity sports here at Tower Hill and uh, is playing varsity tennis in college. So uh, this is near and dear to the Spears family as well. Um, so uh, first day of school, uh, the kids, they don't even know that they have masks on. All of us, you know, are dying to go outside and take it off. But the kids, some of the lower school kids uh, go out for you know, PE and whatnot, and say, please take your mask with them. They won't. They just feel more secure in the mask. It's really interesting and to see what the residual impact of this um, pandemic era will be. Um, so, uh, one of the things that I believe firmly, and I think faculty join me uh, in, is that you know, academic rigor um, and relevant rigor. Academic rigor is enhanced by a sense of joy, a sense of safety, and being in a safe space. Uh, where you can be fully yourself. And um, so we, we lean into at Tower Hill the combination of compassion and joy and academic rigor. Um, just so that you get a sense, um, we thought, gosh, okay, we're gonna have to bring the kids back to school masked and everyone's gonna think it's the same old as last year, but you can see from this chart that um, in fact, um, there are many things different from, from last year to this year, and we reminded the kids of that, and we are off and running, it feels just so different than last year, but we have had an extraordinary health team overseen by our associate head of school, Anthony Kasakia, who's right there, um, and they uh, were a rigorous workout last year and continued to meet um, with uh, epidemiologists and making sure that we're doing all the right things. We did not miss one day uh, from September 8th last year all the way through graduation, and our teachers were just um, heroes, and, and uh, it matters to have kids in person in school. <clears throat> so our word for the year is inspire, and um, each year we pick a word for the year, and, and the, the faculty and, and uh, administrative team talk about a word for the year just as a rallying point. We've had kindness, we've had courage, we've had integrity, we've had unity, and. I cannot tell you what creative things our students and our teachers do with the word for the year. And this year, um, Inspire uh, is just what we see around, and hopefully what you feel this weekend is, is some inspiration really made possible by the talent and love and joy of our teachers, coaches, and students and family. <clears throat> so um, we, uh, the board blessed a strategic plan in 2016 after a, um, a robust year of market research and data research, uh, upon which we built our strategic plan that had core tenants, investing in faculty, building an engaged, diverse, diverse community, and an, an exhilarating academic education for students. And so you can see some of the things we've accomplished here. Um, our enrollment has increased 16% uh, since 2015 when the, before the plan. Um, our annual fund has increased 37%, thank you so much. Uh, and um, our financial aid, 62%, and on down. Um, we have increased our professional development bu budget 76%, and that's, that is, there's a direct sector to an exhilarating, excellent academic 
experience for our students and what we invest in our faculty. And we have just an incredible faculty who uh, would, would, you know, they would walk through fire for their students and we need to continue to invest in them in, them in high levels. When I got here, we were not paying um, anything for teachers who wanted to um, go back and, and get an advanced degree, a master's or a PhD. We now um, pay 50% of that, so that's a start. We want to create, uh, you know, a faculty chairs in each of our departments to honor faculty. When I got here, we had we had two awards for faculty, and a school of 103 years old needs to honor its faculty in appropriate and multiple ways. Uh, we created a social justice program. Um, when I interviewed as head of school, uh, now you know, eight years ago, you meet, you know, spend two days interviewing with lots of people, um, and. What I noticed coming from a New England school that was very diverse and had focused on uh, DEI work was it was just dead quiet. And where there's quiet, there are stories to be, to be told, there's joy, there's pain. And um, so happily through my first year, we appointed a director of social justice, Diane Connor, and she has created a team around her. Um, and we uh, last year had a social justice task force led by a trustee and Diane Connor and many um, that, that included parents, trustees, alums, administrators, uh, faculty, students, and, um, and we want to hold ourselves accountable really to uh, moving forward in this important way so that, that our students are conversant, uh, culturally competent, and that they can function um, in, in the world and in college. And in fact, we got feedback from our alums who love the school, love the experience, but said, you know, we didn't feel prepared. We didn't talk about any any of the issues uh, that now the world and our country in particular is, is um, talking about. So we're proud of our social justice program and we have more work to do always. No, any school that kind of puts a stake in the ground and says we're done um, is is mistaken, I believe, because there are always conversations. And, 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 you know, some people right now think this is, is political. None of us as teachers or heads or administrators went into education because we want to go into politics. In fact, quite the opposite. Um, this isn't left or right or in the middle. In fact, our job is to create safe spaces for students uh, to engage in critical thinking, learning more about who they are, where their soul is, who they're growing into, what they, who they want to be. And the only way to do that is to make sure that every student who walks up those eight steps into the front door uh, has an experience here all day, and when they walk up, down those eight steps, that they feel um, respected, safe in who they are, um, and they feel like they've been stretched, heard other opinions in respectful ways, and been able to share theirs. So um, the other thing that we did was create a global initiatives program, and so Maurice Rapp, the teacher who oversees that, had a hard year last year with COVID because we couldn't you know, travel or do, do any of that. But we do have students from different countries and home state programs here. We have a student from Germany, the Czech Republic, students from different parts of China, and they really make us a stronger community. Um, and so we are committed to being a school of Wilmington and of the world. Uh, you can see kind of a nice trajectory here. You may say, oh my gosh, you know, are we getting too big? What happened to my small, cozy school under my watch? Um, this will always be a warm um, community where we know each other, care about each other, take care of one another, and you can do that um, as a school of 822 students. And you can also offer a uh, much more robust and, and the breadth and depth and scope of our curriculum can be, um, can be much more excellent um, in, in this way. The other thing that happened that I noticed, I had always been in the admissions business uh, in a, before I became a head of school, and um, ninth grade entry is, is a huge opportunity to infuse the school with new talent, what have you. And we were, um, you know, I, I, I think we were just a little asleep at the switch or comfortable as an institution. We didn't, we didn't take advantage of that entry year. So now, you know, our admissions um, team is, is here at Bard, and Kristen Mumford, who oversees that, will tell you that we, we take 25, 35 new ninth graders, and it makes a huge difference because those kids who've been here from pre-K, they get wiggly in eighth grade and think, well, like, if I've been here, done that, and I have all the friends I have, but they have 35 new, new friends who come in and enhance our teams, and if we don't take them, some other school is gonna take these really talented student athletes, and, um, and they're gonna beat us. So 
we figured out ninth grade is an important time to uh, welcome new students. You can see our enrollment by division. Uh, this is something that um, is really important. No longer is it, um, you know, again, when I, when I came, there were terrific people on the finance committee, just so loyal to the school, smart, talented, and de dedicated time, but just didn't have the exposure of the kind of national landscape of independent schools. And, and kind of the thought process was, well, we're doing a really good job. The, 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 if we can balance the budget and, and the little, the least we spent on financial aid. In fact, that's no longer a thing. Um, and in fact, it's quite the opposite, that there are people who will look at schools, families who want to know that the school serves a diverse population and socioeconomically. And so we, we do, and we have, we've um, doubled the financial aid, um, uh, commitment to financial aid. And, and uh, it's really important that, that we make sure that this continues because there are incredibly talented students in this area who um, would, who, wouldn't come to Tower Hill if it weren't for, for our financial aid program. Um, and truth be told, I tell all our students, you know, everyone's on some financial aid because the cost of educating one student is much greater um, than, uh, is greater than um, what the tuition is. And so that's where our annual fund comes into play and we are able to keep our tuition in a reasonable way. And thank you. This is um, extraordinary work and um, uh, important. It does it does fund our operating budget. It, 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 it's built into our operating budget. So if we don't hit our annual fund, I can't keep my promise to the art teacher that we will have the supplies uh, for ceramics and the clay and uh, faculty salaries and this kind of thing. So it's built into our budget. Um, we stack up very well uh, in terms of testing. Um, you will also know if you walk by the down to upper school hallway that our, our kids uh, have done tremendously with colleges. We have over 130 colleges coming to Tower Hill each year to sit and, and visit and get to know Tower Hill students. Um, so uh, lest, you know, sometimes people think, oh gosh, global initiatives and DEI and whatever somehow is diluting uh, the academic rigor of Tower Hill. It in fact is enhancing it and we, we have kids who are um, off to incredible places last year and, and um, some play college athletics and recruited uh, even in their junior year. <clears throat> so um, this year, the vision forward is really to keep the momentum going, to, to take stock of what we have accomplished. We have, um, you know, the, the bricks and mortar projects that you have seen, the new hub, uh, Center for Innovation, and the new dining commons, the experiential classroom for lower school outside. Um, those are all, were part of the strategic plan, but uh, Bricks and mortar is only bricks and mortar. If it doesn't support people and programs and the soul of the school, um, then, then we're barking at the wrong tree, but we have made sure that those spaces are really fundamental to our mission and our human ethos here at Tower Hill. <clears throat> so um, each year we pick three institutional goals, or however many, but this year is three, um, and we do that in combination with the faculty and, and the administrative team. Um, and this year, you know, is really to, to make sure that, that we are pressing ourselves as to what rear looks like so that we are looking at how colleges and business schools and universities are, are educating uh, students so that they are prepared for experiential learning, for lecture, for, you know, good old fashioned teaching and, and writing and arithmetic and also other experiences um, in teaching and learning. So that relative rigor is important in that. In that regard, and of course, health and well-being is never. We have a wellness center now with two school psych psychologists. We have a wellness program that threads through our academic day and <clears throat> divisions in age-appropriate ways. Because um, you know, we all know if we are healthy and whole, it's hard to learn, and it's important to be holistic in our education here, kind of mind, body, and spirit. Um, I talked about social justice and a strategic focus forward, meaning to pat ourselves on the back and be proud of those things we've accomplished, but not to rest on our laurels and to continue to, to focus on areas of the strategic plan, such as um, Tower Hill Green, which uh, the strategic plan challenged us to be environmental stewards and to make sure our students are aware of ways in which they need to, um, they need to carry forward and learn about um, our environment and, and sustainability. So we will be focused on that, we'll be hosting our very first Green Summit this spring, calling together educators around the region to host a conversation about um, environmental stewardship. So if you happen to be in that field or interested or and point us towards some great resources and speakers, we would, we would love that.
the task forces, um, the social justice task force focused on these different areas, uh, obviously curriculum, policies and procedures, and recruitment and retention, and those conversations were terrific. Um, we put this up here to share with you that um, it, is, it is a wonderful thing when people um, kind of hold Tower Hill uh, in trust, and um, Mr. Laird, bless his heart, passed away um, two years ago and left Tower Hill $5 million in his, in his uh, will. And we didn't know this in advance, but uh, we, we, we are so moved by alums and families that really do think of Tower Hill, stewarding Tower Hill forward. And um, we just feel like we should honor him and share his, uh, his uh, some of his story is shared in the past bulletin if you haven't read it, but we thank Mr. Laird for his love and deep uh, commitment to Tower Hill. <clears throat> so, and uh, this was our volley team, volleyball team who last night uh, was victorious over Sanford School, which was the kickoff to homecoming weekend. Um, and uh, just give you a flavor of kind of the joy and the reason why I'm the luckiest person in the world to, to be head of Tower Hill. Um, okay, uh, I'm going to call up the president of our alumni association, which is um, Ashley Altschuler, who is just please green and white, or maybe green? White. White, oh dear, I got that wrong. I will be reprimanded. Yeah. Go green. Um, okay, and I want to thank Ashley for his leadership of the, um, of the alumni council. It's a devoted group of alums. If you know or consider yourself to be a um, devoted alum and want to get more engaged with the school, we are always looking for um, engaged members of our alumni council. So pass those things our way, including your own. Thanks, Ashley. Thank you, Bessie, for that kind introduction and those kind words. It means a lot. Um, I'm very proud to be a Hiller and Lifer, class of 1990 graduate. And uh, for those who I just met who were the awards recipients, I, I have two children here now who are in middle school. They, I hope, will be lifers. Uh, I hope that they exceed my 14-year stint because they started in Tower Tots, which didn't exist in my day. And I'm hoping they go the distance and become members of the 15-year club. I appreciate very much what Bessie said at the state of the, of the school because the, the measures that have been put in place for the diversity, the inclusion, and the advancement and development of our Tower Hill community have directly benefited my children. Direct benefit, and I see it every day in who they become and how they're growing and developing. I know it helped me as a Tower Hill student to be a member of the local community in the world. I like to boast to everyone who I meet about Tower Hill and anyone that I left in Manhattan is that the sole reason I came here with my wife and, and three children was because Tower Hill let us in and said, welcome back to your local community. So we believe ourselves as worldly due to what Tower Hill gave me as a youngster, but also as members of our local community. And I aspire that my children gain the same, the same benefit. I also have to applaud this school and its teachers, its faculty, and staff for what they did during the pandemic in 2020. Truly impressive. And I know of no other school in the country that can boast the fact that they stayed in school every day during the global pandemic, which has truly given my children and their classmates a significant advantage for their advancements as they move on in a very challenging environment, a very competitive environment. So I'm grateful for all of you of being here. It's easy to preach to this crowd because they're all Tower Hill lovers and many of them are alums. So without further ado, we are here to honor our recipients. And for those of you that don't know, the Alumni Council, many of which are here today. So I thank you all. I, I see many faces in, this, in the crowd. Yep. Thanks, Tori. I also just, just saw you as well. Um, so that, and many of them are here. I ask that they could please stand and be recognized as a member of the council, just to embarrass you. Come on. Thank you. So, so we are the central repository, I like to think, as the Alumni Council, for all things alumni for Tower Hill. And we look after our, our alums, which span generations, and come from many different parts of the country, the world, and from many different backgrounds. And we like to think of ourselves as a group who looks after uh, Tower Hill and the stewardship that it's given us, but also to look back on the people that have been part of these halls for many years and the contributions that they give and that they make to our new and current local community. So part of this event today is to let you all know about the Alumni Council. We host a lot of events for homecoming, as you can imagine, including this event. We also have the uh, beloved senior dinner, which I still remember mine. 
We also do many activities during the year, including a golf outing in June, which is a huge hit, and an amazing friend raiser. So uh, it's, it's events like this that we do for the benefit of our, our beloved Tower Hill. And I was so honored to be able to, again, be able to present this year's two honorees, who were very impressive and I'm fortunate to have gotten to meet them today and to honor them now. So we're gonna start with the Tower Hill School Young Alumni Award. This recognizes an alumnus or alumna who graduated within the last 25 years and who exemplifies the qualities of a Tower Hill graduate, has distinguished themselves among their peers, and has been involved with the school through volunteer work, contributions, and in other notable ways. This year, Tower Hill is pleased and honored to recognize Dr. Nick Patel, alumnus of class of 2006, with this very special honor. Now a little bit about Nick. Nick Patel, MD, 2006, is a joint replacement specialist at Delaware Orthopedic Specialists, where I have been many times, <laughs> and stand here to tell you that I have been. After graduating from Tower Hill in 06, he earned a dual degree in biology from Emory University and biomedical engineering from Georgia Institute of Technology. He also earned his medical degree from Emory University School of Medicine. He completed his residency in orthopedic surgery at Emory, and his training included high volume elective surgeries at a dedicated orthopedic hospital, along with extensive trauma experience at Grady Memorial Hospital, one of the busiest trauma centers in our country. After his residency, Dr. Patel pursued a prestigious fellowship in hip and knee reconstructive surgery at Harvard University's Brigham and Women's Hospital. Dr. Patel also has a particular interest in hip replacement, partial knee replacement, and use of robotics in joint replacement surgery, all of which I hope I do not need, but I know who to call when I do. <laughs> Dr. Patel is a member of the American Association of Hip and Knee Surgeons and the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. His current research interests include integrating his engineering background with clinical medicine to improve outcomes in joint replacement patients. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Nick Patel to the podium to receive this very special honor. So uh, next panel. 
family diversity out here because it was, was his mom and dad who commuted back and forth. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I think you'll like this one. 
I was so impressed that, that um, she, uh, Ann, was the 100 most influential women in Silicon Valley, I believe, as well as Ellen Coleman last year, who also was the recipient of this award via Zoom last year. And I was so impressed that they had uh, two members of Tower Hill in the same year receiving that award. It, it really means a lot to the school and shows how far Tower Hill graduates can go across the country and back. So I took a little look online and I found an interview that the Silicon Valley Business Journal gave me last year. And I found one little segment that I thought was particularly poignant because now we are, have many students in attendance as well as the school where it all began. To the question of, Anne, give us advice you give to your 18-year-old self. Answer, don't be afraid to work really hard. Don't worry if you haven't settled on the one passion yet. Don't be afraid to chart your own path. But keep in mind that your elders have some hard-won wisdom. With that, please join me in welcoming Ann Cassells to the podium to receive this prestigious honor. Dr. Baroni fixed it, and if you broke your leg, my dad fixed it. <laughs> um, so or orthopedics runs through my family. My brother Chris is here as an orthopedist who, who took over his practice. And Nick, you may not know this, but our dad was one of the very first people in this country to do arthroscopy and publish the first paper on it. So there's a there's a deep, and, and in fact, we'll talk to you about this afterwards, but there's a deep root of orthopedics right here in Wilmington. Um, so, really proud to share this with you. Um, I'm very honored to be back here and really thrilled to have some of my classmates from 1976, including Ken Williams, who was honored yesterday, who, you know, we were all in awe of Ken, I have to tell you. Um, and really grateful to have my brother and sister-in-law, Chris and Susan Cassells here. As was said, their three children went here, as did the four Cassells children of my generation. Um, and by the way, we'd give anything to have our late brother here with us, as well as our parents. Um, I think that we would all agree, Bessie, that whatever competitive institutions we went to after, afterwards, we always felt Tower Hill had prepared us for those competitive challenges that we were taking on. Although, I'm going to be the first to admit that in the 60s and 70s, we were taking the first tentative steps in diversity. Um, I want to call out the excellent teaching that we received. Mrs. Morton made us sticklers for grammar. And actually, a couple of us have a correction for you, Bessie. <laughs> and it, it, she's, she's rolling over in her grave over the slightest little grammar uh, these days. Mrs. Kelly actually made geometry and algebra too a thing of beauty uh, for us. Pops Hughes made me get a subscription to Newsweek because he thought we should learn about current events. Uh, Cal Porjo was an amazing musician uh, who was in fact far better than we deserved. Um, and finally, Bob Baer not only taught us English, um, as Ken talked about yesterday, but he opened our minds to literature by black authors, which I believe he was pioneering in developing that curriculum. Um, I also want to thank Tower Hill for treating girls equally with boys. Um, these days, I think a lot about our moms, people like my mother who went to law school but couldn't practice law, people like Amber Frank's mother, Ava, who had a PhD 
in biochemistry from Yale. Um, we had opportunities that they only dreamed of, and part of that is due to Tower Hill. And I hope that we have lived up to those dreams and, and given something back. So thank you very much. Congratulations, uh, recipients, and we look forward to seeing you all soon. Cheers. Thank you. 